I scanned everyone present at the tournament, and they saw what everyone else saw. There was no body. She wasn't otherwise injured. There's no other evidence. The last place she was seen was Otherworld. We need the real experts to go check out the scene of the crime. Today on the Comic Book Report, Excalibur Hardcover Volume 2. Stick around and check it out. Greetings from Otherworld. My name is Dominic, and today you're watching The Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm finally reviewing the back half of Teeny Howard's Excalibur run. Picking up after the X of Swords event, I was definitely interested to see where this series landed. If you're interested in picking up a copy, I always recommend checking out OrganicPriceBooks.com, our channel sponsor. If you use my code, the comic book report at checkout, you can receive $2 off your order today. Using my affiliate code or links does earn me a small commission, and it's a great way to support the channel. Thank you for considering. Now let's go ahead and dive into Excalibur. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written by Teeny Howard and illustrated by Marcus II. The issues in this volume were published by Marvel Comics beginning in 2020. The volume itself collects Excalibur issues 16 through 26, and finally this oversized hardcover comes in at 296 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that Excalibur hardcover from Marvel Comics. I'm happy to say that the uniformity between this and the Volume 1 is pretty outstanding. I love these additions they've been doing, the oversized hardcover. It can definitely be tricky to navigate this era of X-Men and X-Books, uh, but whenever they release some of these hardcovers, I'm always tempted to pick up a few more. As you can see, they have kind of a minimalist design aesthetic and formatting style. Again, very consistent with some of the releases we've seen from this era. And generally, I've just been a huge fan of these editions. Now, I did review Excalibur Volume 1 hardcover on the channel a few months ago. I'll try to set a link for it. I've also reviewed some other things in the early Dawn of X, like Marauders, X-Force, and I reviewed all of Hickman's run in the X-Men Omnibus. Suffice it to say, I've had a bit of a vested interest in this era of X-Books, so when I heard there was a Volume 2 for this, I had a feeling it would get me in the end. After looking at the dust jacket, I will show you the under the dust jacket artwork, very similar to the Volume 1, the Excalibur print across it. Uh, I will say as well, I've noticed online some of the solicits say issues 16 through 27. To my knowledge, there was never an issue 27 for this series. It ended with 26, which is what is collected here. Another thing that should be noted, this does not include the Excalibur issues that were part of the X of Swords crossover. For that, you'll need to go ahead and pick up the X of Swords hardcover or paperback if you can find that circulating. They are important issues too, so it's a bummer they aren't included in this collection. But like I said, this is the back half of the run directly following after X of Swords. And now just a quick look at the binding for all of you out there. I like the binding. There's very little gutter loss overall, at least in my opinion. This lays flat really great and showcases the artwork admirably. This really is a gorgeous collection just from a standpoint of the format and art alone. I'll definitely get into the story bits momentarily, but like I said, love these additions. Okay, and now as we dive into the collection itself, let's go ahead and start talking about the broader context of where this volume takes place. As I mentioned, these issues take place after the X of Swords event, so my recommended reading order is something like House of X, Powers of Ten, and then if you just want to read Excalibur, I would recommend the first hardcover or two trade paperback collections of Teeny Howard's run, followed by X of Swords. Then you can go ahead and grab this edition or I believe volumes three and four of the paperback respectively. 
Without going into too many details about the X of Swords event itself, for that you're welcome to check out my review. Uh, basically, the only real plot point of huge significance to the Excalibur run you're reading here is the apparent death of Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain. During the X of Swords events, she effectively shatters like stained glass and is presumed to be dead. So this run here after X of Swords picks up with the rest of her Excalibur team, which she was leading, sort of trying to figure out the mystery of her death to see if she's still alive, if there's a way to bring her back, and so forth. We have them enlisting the help of Excalibur, who is sort of the investigative unit at Krakoa, and they really can't find a ton of results, they can't really draw any real conclusions, and they recommend since she died in Otherworld, and since Excalibur are sort of the guardians of Otherworld, and sort of the best mutants for the job, X-Factor recommends that they go to Otherworld and try to solve the mystery, see if they can get any information from Saturni or anyone over there, and effectively figure out what's going on with Betsy. While in Otherworld, Excalibur also has assistance from the rest of the Braddock family, and we eventually find Betsy's consciousness in sort of a parallel world version of Betsy Braddock. Uh, kind of interesting happenings there. Eventually, the Captain Britain Corps, Excalibur, all of these different factions and people sort of help aid in bringing Betsy Braddock back. After a minute, Betsy Braddock does appear to return, although she seems a bit not herself or traumatized from all the events. We eventually find out, if I'm interpreting it correctly, that effectively she is back, but she's also sort of inhabited by this mutant known as Malice, who, for lack of a better term, is a kind of disembodied mutant who sort of possesses different victims. This entity kind of bounces around and ends up causing a bunch of trouble. Ultimately, though, Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, is finally restored to her true self and form and life through the help of none other than Psylocke. Longer time X-Men fans might know there's definitely a history between Betsy Braddock and Quanon, the kind of assassin body that Betsy Braddock had for a while. In this Krakoa era, they are two separate mutant people. They're restored to kind of their own identities, and she's using the codename Psylocke. Betsy Braddock is the new Captain Britain. Anyway, they have a shared mental link and psyche and stuff from all of their other past situations. So Psylocke shows up and essentially gets Betsy's consciousness back into her body and effectively restores her. They have a subsequent adventure trying to track down and help Malice where able. And generally, these few issues with Psylocke and Betsy Braddock are some of my favorite in this collection. There's definitely some palpable tension, some really good fight sequences and conflict, and they, I think they were just written really well. These couple issues, like I said, narratively are some of my favorite, kind of the resurrection or return of Betsy Braddock, and everything that Psylocke did to play a part in that, I just thought was exceptional. It was really interesting, and I think overall, like I said, it's one of the standout stories in this entire collection. After that, we eventually head over into the Hellfire Gala, so we do have the Hellfire Gala Excalibur issue in here. Although it's not really of a huge consequence of an issue, it's sort of just kind of okay in my opinion. And then after that, we have some other storylines beginning to build regarding uh, sort of these occult factions in Britain that sort of blame Betsy uh, for not being Captain Britain during this interim where she was effectively dead, although they don't really know that. And so they kind of want to out her from Britain, sort of ban her, not have her be sort of their guardian. There's a lot of kind of racism happening over there with the witch breed, as they're calling the mutant uh, homo superior race at the time. So there's a lot of tension about Betsy Braddock uh, being a mutant and Captain Britain, the defender of Avalon, protector of Otherworld, and all of these things. So there's certainly a lot of political intrigue and things happening behind the scenes throughout the latter half of this collection. Uh, they really go into it as we ultimately see one of her main enemies rising up in the form of Arthur, who is aided by Merlin, who is apparently corrupted, trying to sort of purify the defender of Avalon and ruler of Otherworld, using Arthur instead of the mutant Captain Britain here, and Saturni, who has sort of taken the place in the Starlight Citadel. And it kind of comes to a head with a sort of war or battle between these two factions, those following Merlin and Arthur, and those with Saturni and Captain Britain. 
Along the way, we do have a couple other subplots. We have a fantastic issue or two with Doctor Doom and Otherworld. That was another highlight for me, mostly just because I love Doctor Doom, and it was fun seeing him in this Excalibur book. And ultimately, the story sort of ends with Captain Britain kind of fighting. I felt like it was a bit anticlimactic. You almost feel like you're missing out on another story arc here. Uh, so forgive me if I'm mistaken, but my understanding is Teeny Howard's run ends here. I believe she's picking back up the story of Betsy Braddock in a new Captain Britain series that might be ongoing right now. But my feeling with this whole collection story-wise is that it felt a bit disconnected. Yes, we have a couple story arcs in here, but there wasn't an overly clear through line for me. I know that they're building to this war between Captain Britain and Arthur, and that was done kind of effectively, I guess, but it didn't really feel like it stuck the landing. So it left kind of a weird taste in my mouth once this was all finished. I almost felt like we needed another little mini arc at the end to kind of wrap up this storyline, but perhaps that's what's happening in the new Captain Britain series, or maybe I'm missing a run entirely. The idea was that this ended on sort of the call to arms and Betsy Braddock as Captain Britain is back, ready to fight in this great war for kind of the future of Otherworld and Britain and all of these things. I think it was still good, but like I said, it leaves this collection feeling a tad hollow at the end. Again, you get the sort of adventuring, warring, like amazing, heroic Captain Britain, but you don't actually get to see the resolution or fight here, and I think I would have loved to see it, especially knowing that this is the end of Excalibur's run under Teeny Howard, uh, but that's kind of what we get here story-wise. As far as characters go, we no longer have Apocalypse as part of the Excalibur team after the events of X of Swords, and ultimately the roster doesn't feel as lively uh, as when he was on the team in the previous volume and during X of Swords. Uh, we have Richter kind of picking up the pieces, and I almost felt like he had some shining moments, but they almost don't know what to do with him here, it feels like. I feel like for the most part, Rogue and Gambit are underutilized even more than in the first hardcover edition. I think Rogue has a couple moments here that are definitely noteworthy, but Gambit may as well have not been here. He was cool in some of the fight sequences, and there's a couple moments, but he didn't have a lot of standout character-defining moments. Uh, Jubilee was great, but again, felt more like a background character. I really feel like this entire uh, run, in this hardcover at least, uh, really just primarily focuses on Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, to the point where they could have almost just named this part of the run Captain Britain if they wanted to. I really feel like the most Excalibur ever felt like Excalibur as far as the team dynamic goes was in the beginning when they tried to find the truth and try to bring back Betsy Braddock, and maybe at the end where they kind of come together for the battling. Other than that, it really felt like we were just chasing around Betsy. Uh, I did think that they got a lot more development on that character and that character as Captain Britain, and I really enjoyed that. I like seeing some of the other universes. I like seeing the stuff in Otherworld. And as I noted as well, very great use of Psylocke. The couple of issues she's in during this collection are just some of my favorites. I also think what they did with Malice was pretty interesting. The kind of backstory issue on her uh, was definitely illuminating. And I really like what they did during the Doctor Doom issues. But this collection was it felt like a lot more showcasing sort of the side characters rather than the actual Excalibur team. Uh, Pete Wisdom is also used throughout this a little bit, who is a mainstay in Excalibur runs in the past. Uh, and I should say there are some winking nods to previous Excalibur runs. Like I said, we do get the rest of the Braddock family. Brian, Megan, their daughter, and of course the brother Jamie. Uh, they're used to varying degrees of success in my opinion, uh, but maybe not quite as much as they were in the previous volumes. Uh, we also have Saturnai show up. I liked how they did stuff with her, especially post X of Swords. They really showcased her character a lot during that event, so this was kind of a fun epilogue to see what happens with her after X of Swords, things like that. And that's really where it was for the characters for me in this book. I feel like the characters overall took a back burner in this volume outside of Betsy Braddock and some of the supporting characters that weren't even part of the team like Psylocke, Malice, Doctor Doom, Saturni. Some of those characters were some of the most interesting in this collection to me, um, which I thought was interesting. 
Uh, the art, though, the art throughout this entire collection is absolutely stunning. The colorist as well should be really commended for their work. It's vibrant, lush, beautiful, which I can say about the previous volume as well. I think the art across this entire Excalibur run is very consistent. You're never pulled out of a moment, and it's just beautiful. I think for the art alone, this collection is worth picking up. I will definitely revisit it to see some of the, uh, just the paneling and the just character design, the movement, the action, the world building. How all of that's done and presented visually is just really one of the high marks for this entire collection. As far as those that want to jump into this Excalibur series, I do recommend that you start from issue 1. Even if you don't read House of X, Powers of Ten, which kind of establishes the new status quo, Krakoa, everything with the all the mutant books, all the X-Men books, you could probably get away with just starting with Excalibur issue 1. But I do recommend those first volumes in trade paperback or the first volume in hard cover for this run. And again, even if you don't read all of Excalibur, I do recommend at least reading the issues for what happened with Betsy Braddock, as that really is the narrative core for the beginning of this hardcover, as I mentioned. So there is a bit of a barrier to entry for this volume specifically, but I did want to do a review for those that might be interested in picking up the volume two. Uh, like I said, I wanted to finish out the run. I, it was hard to say no to this edition. I love this kind of format. Uh, but generally, I would love to see how Marvel collects these moving forward. This era is really hard to collect, I think, because there's just so much X content right now and it's hard to know sort of where to go. So I'm tracking down kind of the end of the run here. I'm hoping to get Marauders Volume 2 to finish out that run as well and kind of see where I go for my future with this whole X-Men era universe. After issue 26, the final issue in this collection, we do get this handful of extras here. We have a cover art gallery, some different sketches and artwork pieces. Always love seeing that, and great to see the full covers reproduced here at the back. Uh, just like I said, great collection, great addition. But the story and some of the character work didn't wow me in this one. This isn't one of my most readable X-Men titles, uh, but the art is outstanding. There was definitely some good moments here, some good issues. Like I said, loved all of the Betsy Braddock versus Psylocke stuff. And, you know, it's a memorable piece, and I'm happy I was able to finish out the run. And now I'll just show you a couple quick side-by-sides with the first hardcover volume in this Excalibur run. Like I mentioned, I did review this in the past on my channel, so I'll make sure the video is linked if you're interested. But yeah, this is volume 1 and 2 of Teeny Howard's Excalibur run in the hardcover editions. So if you have these two hardcovers, you have her entire run, save the few issues that were during the X of Swords event. But this is what these two would look like on a bookcase. You can see a look at the spines. And now that you've taken a look at these side by side, I'll just do one more final shot with the last missing piece of this whole arrangement, of course, being the X of Swords event. I do have a paperback, would love to upgrade to hardcover someday, but this is what I've got. These three would contain the full Excalibur run in this Dawn of X kind of Krakoa era. Excalibur might not be the pick of the litter for some of the X books for many, uh, but the art's great. There are some memorable storylines, and these additions are gorgeous. And now all that's left is to give this collection a grade. For serving as a great epilogue to X of Swords, especially where Betsy Braddock is concerned, coupled with some outstanding art, even if some of the character work and storylines were maybe not my favorite, the Comic Book Report is happy to give Excalibur Volume 2 hardcover from Teeny Howard a C+. This was still a slightly above average collection for me. I love this oversized edition. I love the kind of formatting they choose to do with these X-Book hardcovers. I did enjoy being able to finish out Teeny Howard's run on the title. I think some of the best moments were the X of Swords kind of post event here, the first storyline in this book. Love seeing the stuff between Betsy and Psylocke, and overall there were some fun moments. Might not be my pick in the X-Men books of this era, but still happy to round out my collection. Let me know if you've read Excalibur, and until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Don't forget to leave your like and comment, and thank you for watching. Have a good one.